Today we've got a bad uh, high pressure control right here, stuck open, got it bypassed. I'm gonna show y'all how to put a new one on uh, with a system. It's got pressure in it, uh, it's a system like this. I'll show you the steps it takes to go through it. First thing you do, turn it off, and we're gonna valve off the discharge line to isolate the top section here. So then once you get this one, in the fully down position at this point you'll be able to relieve the pressure out of here recover the pressure that's in there which right now is holding about 250 psi so we're gonna get that out and once the top of the compressor is empty you will remove this unwire this all right make sure your power is off all the power sources coming into the machine. Remove, to remove these seal tights, you've got a backing nut right there. You want to hit it to where it turns counterclockwise using a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver and a hammer hitting it that way if it's real tight. That's a little trick to use to get it off. All right, once it's out, you can, uh, the new one I have here has a built-in capillary with this on it. That's what's going to reach around and come over here. So I'm going to take this whole assembly off, mount this one. So you can see this one's mounted from the back. It has uh, two screws holding it. Got to loosen this entire plate off to be able to get something in there to take those off unless you've got a short and stubby and I don't have one. It's two nuts hold it onto the top. Just now we're loosening those up. This whole uh, whole panel will lift off. Not panel. Bracket. Take those out, and then it'll. There she is. Now it's ready to come off of here, and. That one to go back on. The new one will come with uh, with new screws. That it should. Let's see. Yep, there we go. New screws to mount it to the back of it, so I'm gonna mount this back onto there and reattach it here. With these coiled up pieces of copper, best way to do it, so you don't break it or, or kink it, is to unroll it like that. And roll it out to however long you need it. Looks like that's gonna do it, right? Uh, kind of. Almost. It's hard to do this with one hand, but. So, yeah. Unroll it and run it to your desired length where you need it and attach it. Just like that. These are flare fitting seals, so make sure you tighten it good and then spray it with bubbles make sure you don't have leaks next thing wire this back up all right now this one already has a opening a hole for this to go in uh, so that's good so I'm gonna do a little trick to try to keep uh, this from slipping off because the seal tight thing that keeps it tight in here and tightens it, it's, it's gone, it's missing, it's lost, so. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make the diameter right here a little thicker so that this won't be able to slide off it. I'm gonna use electric tape for that. So this is just a little, this ain't a trick, this isn't anything fancy. I just don't have another seal tight connector to replace it, so this is what I'm gonna do. Best and least I can do while I'm on it. That should be enough. Okay. So now, that won't come off. And then we can put this on there, get a few little, a few turns on it. And it will stay together and not come apart anymore. How about that? It's all right, I tell you. Once all that's together, route the wires in through here. 
and then put the ring over the wires before you wire them up to hold it in place. If you wire them up first, you're gonna have to take them loose so you can get the ring on. Now, if you're gonna wire these up with just wires and not connectors, always put them in behind the screw and go around it clockwise. The same way the screw will be turning when you're gonna tighten it. So I'm gonna actually strip mine a little longer so that I have more wire to go around the screw. Both of them. Okay, I had to switch phones because that one went dead. And so I've got my wires stripped. I'm gonna wrap them around these uh, these lugs and tighten them down. All right, so just like that, focus. It has to go in on the left side of the, the lug so that when you tighten it, get you steady here. When you tighten it, it actually keeps it in there. That's electricity, electrician 101 right there. If you go the other way, it'll be a poor connection. Okay. So. Okay, good and tight. Always make sure all of your electrical connections are tight especially high voltage at high amps. Alright, I just need to connect my, my ground wire and tighten that on. Okay, that's all done. Okay, now at this point, we need to adjust it. So this being R22, I'm going I'm to set it, and this might be wrong, but oh well, it's better than not having one at all. I'm going to put it to cut out at about 400, and then it'll cut back in Maybe cut back in at uh, once it gets down to uh, 250. So 450 or 425 and 250 is what I'm gonna do. And to do that, first thing you do is you turn when you turn these screws to make it makes this go up and down. So turning this one will actually make this square metal plate with the numbers on it go up and down. Turning this one will make this needle go down. So to set this, you start with the big one, the cut out, and then you adjust the cut in. Okay, so I like it. I think 450 or 425. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 425 cut out. Around 250 cut in. So that would put us what? R22 is what we got here, so. a hot day condensing temps around 130 and add 30 to it so about 400 425 I think that will be good that will be fine all right next mm, last thing we do before we cut on power is we're gonna reopen our discharge side king valve by turning it counterclockwise and you turn it counterclockwise but not all the way once you get once you go all the way on it counterclockwise then it won't allow any pressure to flow to this anymore so you want to crack it back open just a little bit so that we can still read pressure on it right there and now I believe just double check but we are ready to reapply power and see all right here we go I know I need new gauges. Thank you. All right, so that's that. I will uh, leak check this off camera, but I will do it. Make sure that this wire, not wire, this copper tubing is not rubbing against anything. Don't lean it on anything. Make sure it's free the entire way or it will rub and it will create a leak and then we'll lose all the refrigerant in the system. Don't do that. And 
As you can see, I've got one motor not working right here. So I'm gonna end this video here and begin another video about replacing this. So if you wanna check that out, stay tuned.